Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on today's video, we're going to do a comparison between the LG UM7300 television and the Samsung TU8000. So I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for this video, and here it is. So we're going to talk about the picture quality, some of the menu systems, the audio quality, and more. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. <music> For this video, we're going to be using the 50 inch LG UM7300 series and it's available from 43 inch all the way up to 65 inch. Compared to the Samsung television, the frame around the television is much larger, so it does look more like a picture than a floating television set when you mount it on the wall. This series of LG TVs has Google Assistant built in, Amazon Alexa built in, Apple HomeKit, and Apple AirPlay 2, so you have just about every option that's available on the market today. This television is powered by WebOS, which is LG's version of their operating system. It also has a two-channel 20-watt amplifiers, and it supports DTS decoding, where the Samsung doesn't have that. Also, it has Bluetooth 5.0, and it will sync with LG Soundbar. A feature I really love about the LG is that it has this magic remote control, where you have this mouse pointer that moves around the screen, and you can just select everything, just like a computer. Taking a look at the back of the LG, you have three HDMI inputs and one of them supports ARC, which is really good in case you hook up a soundbar or something that supports it. You also have two USB inputs so you can power off devices like your Google Chromecast or something like that. You have one LAN connection, a fiber optic, and it does have component videos in case you want to hook up an older DVD player. And it does have one coaxial input and you can use this for using an over the air antenna to scan for local channels so you can get free TV programming. Here we have the TU8000 by Samsung. Now this is the 43 inch model, but they make them all the way up to 85 inches. Now unlike the LG, you can see this bezel on this television is a lot more smaller and it looks a lot more premium in comparison. The Samsung is powered by Tizen operating system and it has built in Bixby and Amazon and Alexa. And you can hook up Google Assistant, but it is pretty tedious using the application. Also, it does have AirPlay 2 and you can do screen sharing very easy with this television set. This TV does have Bluetooth built in and Dolby Digital Plus audio outputs. Taking a look at the back of the TU8000, you have two USBs just like the LG, as well as you have three HDMIs just like the LG. But the interesting thing is instead of using Component, they have Composite, which is a really old format. I'm not sure why Samsung didn't use Component instead of Composite. You also have your Ethernet input and your antenna input for using over there antennas. So here's the remote control that comes with the LG. As you notice, it has all the full buttons on it. You have your power, of course, the microphone, and this button you can use to set up all your different sound bars or different audio systems. You still have a full keypad, of course, your volume up and down, channel up and down, and this home button would trigger your apps on the bottom of the TV set. And then this button actually triggers your settings so you can go through all your different picture settings, your audio modes, and more, and I'll show you that in a minute. Also, you have this track button where you can just roll up and down, and that's great for scrolling through websites. You have an arrow up and down, side to side, and then this is your source button, and again, you have those hot keys on the bottom, so that's a great remote control that LG makes. Now, here's the remote control that comes with the Samsung, a lot more simplified, and I like this remote control. The only problem is I like to have access to direct buttons. Instead, you have to use the menu system to get to just about everything. On the top, you're going to have your power button, your microphone, you have some hot keys for certain application, your voice command button, and amber mode so you can put the TV like in a picture frame mode. Also, you have your side to side, up and down, enter on the center, your back, your home, play pause, and then you have your volume up and down and you press it for mute, channel up and down, and then your hot keys at the bottom. So overall, I'm going to say that the LG remote control is much better to me. Now I'm going to show you guys the menu system on the LG television set using this remote control. Now there's a lot of information so I put a progress bar at the very bottom of the screen so you can see how much time is left on the footage just in case you want to move around and get the information that you need. On the side here you can see you have your picture mode, you have your aspect ratio, standard user mode. You can also change from your different inputs from fiber optic over to the speakers, your sleep timer, your network connections like your Wi-Fi or LAN. And if you hit all settings at the bottom, then this is where you get into the master list. Under pictures, if you go down to additional settings, 
you have your eye comfort mode where it kind of lowers the brightness on it. And if you're using like an HDMI for a gaming system, you can change your instant game response right there below. Now under sound settings, you can have adaptive sound where it actually maintains the same volume. You can do a sound test to test your speaker or audio system. Under connections, you can rename the television set. You can also choose your different inputs as far as the Wi-Fi. You can adjust the screen sharing settings, your HDMI device inputs, and you can link to devices for voice control. Like for example, here's Alexa and here's a Google Assistant. Under general, you can change the languages. This includes the menu and the audio. And here's the options available for that. You can set up the location for the local channels. You can set up the time and date. And under about this TV set, this is where you can check for updates, notifications. And under safety, you can put different locks on the TVs for like a parental control. And then accessibility. Under here, you can change the audio guidance so it won't talk every time you hit a button on it. You can change the pointer settings. And you have some other features like closed caption off and on. You can also have the TV to make a sound when you turn it off and on, which I like. And you also have the high contrast mode as well. Some people are buying this TV and they're setting it up for demo mode, but all you need to do is go to general, go down to additional settings. And then if you go down here to the bottom, you can change the TV from home mode over to store mode. So that's an option for you guys if you're having that problem. Now, when it comes to controls, you can see there's a lot of information inside of the LG's menu system. Next, let's take a closer look at the Samsung's menu system. And here's what a Samsung menu looks like. You have your picture mode. You have standard, dynamic, natural mode. And then you have expert settings. And this is where you can do the brightness, contrast. You can also apply different picture settings for every input. Picture clarity. You have a contrast enhancement, which you can turn off if you like. And a lot of times when you get in that darker picture, this might be the problem. You have your color tone. You have your white balance. Grandma. So you can see you have a lot more details on this one. Then if you go down to sound, you have your speakers. And this is where you can add Bluetooth devices if you need to. You also have sound modes where you can do standard, adaptive sound, amplified sound. And under export settings, you can do your balance. You have an equalizer. And if you have an arc sound bar, you can actually set it up right here. Auto volume, sound feedback, reset the sound. Under general, you have voice assistants like Bixby and you can change it to Amazon Alexa here. And then here's just a little more detailed list about the Bixby settings. Then you have your network settings. In our system management, you can change your languages, change the name of the television set, sign in and out of your Samsung account, and then you can also put a PIN number on there as well. External devices management. This is where you can control devices with the ARC control. You have your gaming mode settings, your signal input plus, and under input management, you can Bluetooth keyboards as well as a mouse. Under eco selection, you can have it to adjust itself according to the light in the room, power saving mode. You can also have it turn itself off after a certain time if it's not seeing a signal. Accessibility allows you to turn off the guide settings, control some of the picture settings, your high contrast, and then you have smart features. Under smart features, you can allow, if you don't want that pop-up to happen every time you turn your TV on, that shows all the applications. It's just a switch right there. And then here where you can factor reset the television set. Then under support, you can update the software. You can also allow Samsung to remote into your TV for customer service reasons and your uh, terms and conditions as far as the privacy and things like that. So here's my opinion about the menu systems. The LG's a little more easier. Everything stayed in one spot. When I was using the Samsung, I felt like I hit the wrong button and I end up out of the menu system. I had to go back in, but I'll edit all that out when I replay the video. But if you're looking to adjust your colors and everything more, you're gonna like the Samsung. If you want simplicity, you want the LG. Now let's take a look at the picture quality. Now to me, the LG appears to be a lot more brighter and people say when the Samsung is in HDR mode, it seems to be a little bit darker and I can see why. Just looking at this illustration, you can see the Samsung is much darker. And I will tell you, both of them are set up to the standard mode. Here's where the Samsung really shines. If you take a look at the LG, you can see in the center of it, it's kind of blown out when you're looking at the lines on this Excel sheet. And as we go over to the Samsung unit, it remains consistent even if I turn the camera, the viewing angles are very good. Being that this 50 inch LG is a VA panel, I know it's not the best comparison, but again, you can see that it's blown out in the center compared to the Samsung television set. Another feature I wanna show you guys is that when the LG doesn't have a signal, it displays some type of gallery. And when you go to the Samsung, it just basically shows you that it doesn't have a signal on the input. Also, if you need TV service, the LG has built-in LG channels and the Samsung actually has the Samsung TV Plus. So both TVs will give you some type of service even without a TV connection. So some parts of this demo is not fair if you decide to go with a 50 inch because the 50 inch is a VA panel where all the other LG UM7300s or IPS, 
So why would LG put another panel in the same series of television set? Really confusing stuff out there. So the next part of this video, you guys are gonna be able to see the picture quality on a high definition source and hear the audio differences. Which one will sound better? And I'm gonna show you guys a demonstration with the PlayStation 4. So those demonstrations I just showed you, in my opinion, the Samsung definitely shines over the VA panel. Now the Samsung is a LED panel, so generally those are going to look much better than a VA panel. Now let's talk about the applications that you can use on both TV sets. Both TVs are supported with an application. Let's take a quick look at the LG Things Q app. So you notice on here you have your volume up and down, your TV channels. You also have your menu button, your input, and then you have this trackpad at the bottom. And as you can see in the background that it's moving the cursor on the TV set. You also have your presets here. And if you slide your screen over, you have your different channels as well. Now let's take a quick look at the SmartThings application. Down here is already set up as well. Then here you have TV controls. And again, you can see it on the TV set. It is controlling the Samsung television set. Now since this TV does support ambient mode, you can click on that. And actually from this application, you can upload your pictures and everything right here. So if I want to put those pictures on the TV, I can press that, press next, then view on TV. And there the pictures are right from the application. Now we're going to try some voice commands with the remote control and Samsung set up with Bixby and the LG set up with the Google Home Assistant. Open up App Store. So the Samsung opened up the App Store, no problem. Now let's try the LG. Open up App Store. Going to LG Recommendations app. So it looks like both of them got the job done. Back to the Samsung. Go to YouTube. Go to YouTube. Going to YouTube app. Open up settings. Open up settings. Going to settings. Now let's try some other commands. Show me HDR videos on YouTube. Show me HDR videos on YouTube. The YouTube video found for the keyword HDR videos. The Samsung did a search where the LG started playing a random channel. Another thing I want to show you guys is that both TV sets do support Apple AirPlay. But if you look at the LG, there's AirPlay and HomeKit settings. Let's go in there and take a look. So with this feature, you can go down to the HomeKit, and if you have an Apple device, you can then use it to control it with your smartphone. And here's what the HomeKit looks like on an iPhone. It's going to allow you not only to stream your video footage over to your TV set, but it's also going to allow you to control your television set just by using Siri. 
Now here's a look at the LG App Store. At the top you have your features, TV shows, and movies. But one thing I really want to show you guys here on the side, you have what's hot, what's new. You can see all your apps and it's categorized according to games, entertainment, life. And then you have one that says My Apps. This is show all the apps that you have installed. And one thing it is very easy, if you want to hit App Update, and under App Updates, you can see all the different applications that needs updates, which is very easy to get to. Now at the top you have search. Now we'll tell you that it will support Apple TV, which is pretty cool. But after having Apple TV, I don't really get it, but it's there. <laughs> now going back under games, there's all kind of online games you can play right here on the television set. And you can hook up a keyboard and a mouse to it, so no problem using the controls. Again, you have a whole list of applications. And if you plan on using Amazon Alexa, you can download the application right here and it becomes part of the television set by pressing to hold down the Amazon Prime button on the remote control. Another app I like, if you go over here, I installed one called, and this app is called Fireplace and you can use this whenever you're not using the television set as a great background icebreaker kind of setup. And if you need to delete an application, just go over to My Apps, press delete, and then you just select all the ones that you want and press delete, no problem. And of course you have access to all kinds of movies, music, TV shows, and more. The App Store on LG doesn't show you how much memory is in a TV, so I'm gonna try a trick that I found on YouTube. If you go to channels and then go to channel tuning, just highlight it and then press one five times. So it looks like this TV set has about 3.8 gigs of RAM. That's a pretty cool trick. I think I might have to make a separate video just for this one. Now let's take a closer look at the Samsung App Store. At the very top, you have your profile, you have a search bar, and then you have a settings. So at the top, you're gonna to see the available memory left in the TV set. Then if you go down here, there's applications that you can delete or move. And unfortunately, Samsung hard baked these in there so you can't remove certain applications even if you don't need them. Now back on the main screen, if you scroll down, again, you can see the download applications. You can see your music applications. You have apps to kill time, smart view enabled applications, and just a few more in here like your videos, some sports, lifestyle, education. Another thing I'm gonna point out is that Samsung now supports Apple Music where the LG doesn't. And again, if you pay $10 a month or if you have a family plan, this is gonna allow you to use your Apple Music without having to use your phone all the time, which is a cool feature for Samsung. The last few things I want to tell you guys is that both TV sets support HLG and HDR10. However, the Samsung will support HDR10+, Plus, where the LG does not. Now, when it comes to thumb drives, both TV sets will play music, pictures, and video files. However, the LG will play more files than the Samsung. So you can see when you guys ask me this question, which TV should you get? It's confusing because both TV sets have their pluses and their minuses. So in the comments below, why don't you guys tell me what you think because I'm still confused. I like both TV sets for different reasons. I'm Tech Steve. Make sure you go and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.